Well, I seem to have a little bit of an issue heading back and uh, just making my way back out of the Great Sandy Straits this morning. There was a bit of a clunk in the engine and a bit of smoke and I turned it off to find that uh, a couple of the mounts that hold the engine to the block have gone amiss and so it has rendered the motor well unusable so just checking out my options speaking to the mechanic he's in Bundaberg and I have a two-day window to get back to Bundaberg the breeze is forecast to come from the east northeast which would make it a perfect sail My uh, 10 knots of east nor'east has turned into maybe 6 knots of west nor'west which means I'm now trying to beat to windward in a tiny little channel trying to get through so that I can get to open waters. Not that I'm in any danger, not that I can't sail without the motor, it's just as soon as you don't have it, you wish you did. All of this time we've got the breeze fighting each other. Here comes some now. We've had the breeze, the traditional breeze is supposed to be out of the um, out of the nor'east. But we've had this southwesterly just uh, playing, trying to interfere with what's going on. And then right now we've had nothing for 10 minutes or so. And there's a bit of breeze now coming out of the southeast. Oh, I like that breeze. That's the best breeze we've had just about all day. You know, people say that light wind sailing never made a good sailor and only heavy winds made good sailing. I beg so much to disagree with that. In racing, when the wind's blowing hard, you just go and you can just over shoot a little bit you can just point it up to wind and it's very forgiving and you just give yourself more safety room to make sure you don't run into anything light winds it's a kettle of different kettle of fish you've got to caress it you've got to treat it like a lover you have to be watching out for its moods and where it's going as, as it changes again you can't just over sheet and go you've got to be gentle you can't lose wind, you can't lose steerage, because then you lose everything. And hopefully I'm going to get out of here before the tide changes, because it's the tide that's really taking me where I need to go. The wind has just been a little bit of an assistance to make me feel a bit better. But soon that tide's going to change, and if I haven't got out of here before that tide changes, then it'll just be pushing me straight back to where I've come from. Okay, a little bit of ruffle of the shows a bit of wind coming not from the direction I want but at least it's wind wind means that we can get somewhere oh that feels good it feels good okay, at least the sails filling now it's always nice when it just starts to move on the sail you get that press you can feel it but it just leans a little bit and presses against the sail. You can feel the keel counteracting against the weight of the, in the sail. Oh, it's so nice. Well, the breeze picked up like it was supposed to, and I made it here before the tide turned. Probably not enough time to get way out through the whole Great Sandy Straits. So I made a decision to anchor here off Pelican Banks. I'm going to stay here tonight and I'll probably leave, actually tonight, I'm probably going to leave about midnight. The tide is going to be coming in, it changes and starts running out again just after midnight. Also it coincides with the moon rising so I'll get a little bit of light just to make my life a little easier. 
Okay, well it's just after 11 o'clock. The tide hasn't quite changed, but uh, it's right at the top and not a very big tide. And there's a Wayne Gibbon moon sitting behind me that just gives me a little bit of light as the tide got near its apex. It started to get a little bit rolly, so I thought I'm going to head off anyway. First light, so uh, looking like it's going to be a beautiful morning. Just plodding along, we've got maybe six or seven knots of breeze from the east, east northeast perhaps, and we're not going very quickly, but yeah, it's kind of neat. To be honest, I've had a little bit of a snooze and just enjoying just getting there. We'll be there when we get there. Well, this is why you have an engine, just because it gets you out of these situations. The breeze just after the sun rose this morning has uh, dropped away to almost nothing. And so I'm doing about, well, between naught and 0.1 of a knot. And I have for the last two or three hours. And the swell's picked up as we've just got more into open sea. So it's the sail you can hear just flopping around. And... Uh, we're flopping around, we're not going anywhere. I know that there will be a bit of breeze a little bit later on, but it's just a pain in the neck. And with a motor, you just even if you motor slowly, you just motor through all of this and you get rid of a lot of that roll and you still feel like you're getting somewhere. At this point, even though I left yesterday at lunchtime, it uh, might be that I don't get in till tomorrow morning unless I get a bit of breeze and so I just got to sit it out well it's taken four and a bit hours but finally we have a little bit of breeze and so we can start ghosting along again it's been a bit of a frustrating four and a bit hours with no wind just doing everything I can to try and keep the boat going forward in some way yeah just in some way <laughs> whichever way and uh, you now it still get frustrating because as you can see that uh, there's a few waves out here and we're a beam onto the waves which means that you know it's pretty rolly and um, not very pleasant for just that slow roll like that but anyway that could be worse things I guess so we're, at least we've got some movement now and so we've uh, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Often the hardest part isn't the bulk of the sailing in open ocean where you just sail and you get there and everything's fine. It gets dodgy and it gets a bit tricky when you get closer and you can hit things and you've got to navigate around and smaller and smaller areas and that becomes even harder when I've got no engine so it was even though there was bits of frustration I knew I was always going to get here and it was just not getting here as fast as I wanted to I got in late last night just as the sun was going down and I anchored in a pretty uncomfortable but relatively safe spot Basically it's an open area just at the front of me here and because uh, I've just come in through the passage There's a nice little spot just down off the marina But there's a few boats in there and it's a little bit tricky It's a pretty tight area and without a motor uh, to get in I'm basically committed once I go in to find a spot And the fact that there's a few other boats in there I wasn't prepared to do it last night I'm going to go and have a little look around this morning Because the next bit is that to get in and for the mechanic I'm going to have to somehow get in closer towards the marina and that's when it gets really tricky. Okay the next stage of this is about to go underway. I've been down to the little hole there beside the marina and there's one boat there, a couple left this morning. I've just been and had a word with him just to let him know what I'm up to, what I'm going to have a go at doing. So there's just enough wind, it's just starting to pick up now. The tides changed and going to help me get in there. But it's time to give this whole thing a go. As you can see, I haven't pulled a lot of sail out. I don't want to go come in here too fast or too hot. Basically, I want to use the current to take me in. And I just want to use the head slot just enough so that I can get a little bit of headway of my own. So it's that balance always of speed. And control. You want to be fast enough because you don't have any you don't have any control of the rudder unless you've got speed. But you don't want to be coming in too fast because that's when other errors happen. So 
Just a little bit of a headsail. I can adjust. It's easier to let the headsail out rather than in. So here we go. Well, I think it's mission accomplished. We've anchored. As you can see, we're close to the beach here, but with this uh, little spit that comes out, it affords beautiful protection. Chris here, who's the guy I mentioned, had a bit of a chat to. He was keeping an eye out to what was going on and what I was up to. And in fact, like all of these things, that I am capable and I know that I can do it. And these days it's not so much about me doubting whether I can do it or not. It's actually more about the consequences if something goes wrong. And just to be able to let people know, I'm probably a bit overly self-sufficient. But uh, it's one thing to start asking for help. It's another thing, I guess, just to warn people and say, this is what I'm doing. Can you please keep an eye out? But if I run into troubles, can you give me a hand? The next little stage in this process is going to be hopefully tomorrow but when the mechanic wants me so to fix it he needs to come out we need to um, jack the engine back up back into alignment and reposition it and then put it back into its mounts in the meantime i'm here i've got a quiet anchorage i can do some things now and not be stressed about what's going on and if i'm going to drift and i've got 24 hours to enjoy here in this perfect little spot We've just uh, picked up Kent. We're about to head off to the boat. Kent is the mechanic. What he doesn't know about like, engines isn't worth knowing. going for as long as possible but unfortunately now we're going to be at a position where we have no choice but to do the complete job well that's it then we're here on the Burnett River time for me to go and find some work to make effective these repairs for some safe cruising in 2020 don't go anywhere though because there's lots of fantastic places that I want to show you. We might not be going by boat, but I'm super excited to bring them to you. Hit that subscribe button. That'd be much appreciated. Also, don't forget to give it a little like. That'd be great. Until next time, smooth sailing.